Hello, welcome to today's first video in a three-part Tactica series covering the Tau strategies that are discussed in the fluff and the codexes. The three that we're going to deal with are the Montka, the Kayun, and the Rinyan. Now, the Montka and the Kayun are actually written explicitly in the codex. The Rinyan is referenced in the 6th uh, edition codex, but it is actually, I think, there's a lot to be offered by diving into that one. So we're going to cover all three. Today's video, we're going to start with the Montco, which is the one that Tau are most well known for. <clears throat> now, it's, it, this one is actually detailed in the Codex. And I'm going to go ahead and I'll read you the specific excerpt from the, what the Codex has. Montco is the most aggressive style of Tau warfare, being the art of identifying a target of opportunity and attacking with speed and overwhelming strength. There are many, very, many famous variants of the Montka, and Osheva, which is Farsight, is the foremost proponent of them all. Montka places a strong emphasis on target prioritization and concentration of fire. A cadre pursuing Montka may stand in readiness for several days, awaiting the command to strike. During this time, they review their plan and carefully choreograph the battle to come. <clears throat> Often the attack will be delivered in stages, with elements of the assault arriving from different directions at prearranged intervals to crush the foe from all sides. The final decision to launch a Montka comes from whoever has the best view of the foe. Often it will be a Pathfinder team or a Ghost Kill. Once launched, the Montka must cause massive damage quickly or else be called off. Escalating wars of attrition are not the Tao way. And a commander will withdraw to strike again from another quarter rather than waste lives and losing battles. Alright. <clears throat> That's in a nutshell, probably the most common approach to Tau warfare, even from a player perspective. The idea of overwhelming firepower uh, is actually built right into the Codex. Uh, not only do they have the strongest uh, basic infantry gun in the game, it's with a strength 5 AP5, uh, they have easy ways to increase their ballistic skill, which is very important, ensuring more hits on target. Uh, often there's also ways to remove cover, so you're, you're, the more hits you can strike, the more damage you can do. And the Tau Codex is designed to really uh, reflect that. Now, <clears throat> it really, if you think about it, the 40k meta uh, in general talks about an alpha strike, which is, you know, first turn, everything's shooting to take a, as much damage out of the, uh, chunk out of the opponent as possible. And that really is what they're talking about here at the Monka. And you'll notice the, the text in the Codex actually references how important target prioritization is. And that, if you've taken a look at any of my uh, Academy videos, we've discussed that concept in several of those, especially with detailing through the uh, Sun Tzu videos. Uh, <clears throat> now, the only problem with this particular uh, strategy is that in its purest form, it is very difficult to actually put into practice because it requires several things to happen in a game that usually aren't present. First of all, you have to know what enemy units you'll be facing and build a list to specifically defeat that. That's how the Tau plan their attacks. So unless you have some way of uh, working with your uh, opponent in a friendly game and design something, knowing what they're going to bring, and they let you tailor list tailor, uh, you're probably not going to have that at ability. Um, you also should be able to set the terrain to your advantage because the tower are going to utilize the terrain and they're going to choose the side of the battle that best gives them the advantages they need. You don't have that ability on the tabletop <clears throat> in most cases. And of course you have to outnumber and outgun your opponent. Now, this one can happen uh, especially when you're facing elite armies, you can outnumber and outgun them. The problem is that when you're facing horde armies, you can't scale your, your force uh, to, to add additional bodies to compensate. So, taking that aside, the only thing you're really left with is the way the Tau units are actually built themselves and the weapons that are available to them. So, it is still possible on the tabletop, <clears throat> but what you, yeah, in order to pull this off, you need to make sure your force is extremely point efficient for the amount of firepower uh, you bring in. Now, it also needs to be resilient, so you don't want squishy units. The units you see in front of you, uh, 
in general, are pretty good in this particular uh, Montco roll. There is one exception, and that is the Pathfinders hidden there in the uh, lower rear. You'll see back here in the, the Pathfinders. Their toughness three, they are armor five. They are not going to survive well, <clears throat> and so that is not a good feature to have in the units participating in the Montco. However, they do have some other abilities that are extremely important, which we'll talk about in a second. But Fire Warriors, uh, they are, for 9 points, you get a single shot, strength 5, AP 5, out to 30 inches, two shots out to 15. That's a good volume of fire for a 9 point investment. You'll be wounding Space Marines on uh, 3 up, so that's not bad. <clears throat> the more hits you get, the more wounds you can inflict, the more saves you can fail. You can force the opponent to fail. So, uh, you also want to take advantage, full advantage, of the formations and detachments that are available to you in the Tau Codex to maximize the number of buffs that, that are available to your ballistic skill. Now, the reason that's important is obviously to increase the efficiency of each turn. The problem is, this is one the one thing that makes Tau players the bane of uh, most of the Warhammer uh, universe. <clears throat> People just do not like how overpowered the Tau are, and to a certain extent I agree with that. Uh, however, from a fluff perspective, uh, all that's going on is you are uh, putting on the table an extremely competent force that pre presents a challenge to the opponent, and the opponents need to be able to adjust. Sometimes it's easier than said than done. Now, in all fairness to those who do complain about the Tau, the fact that they do take uh, tournaments f very frequently, and the fact that you can uh, build game-breaking lists fairly easily, that speaks to uh, the fact that the Codex, the way it's presented right now, does kind of break the faction a bit. I would have preferred that they would... Well, I shouldn't, I shouldn't go into uh, what I think. So it is possible to create extremely powerful Montka type forces but there are certain uh, units you also want to avoid, we'll get to those in a second <clears throat> but just like we've talked about in some of my academy videos <clears throat> the key to success with the Tau forces is target prioritization and concentrating your firepower on small segments of the opponent until they're destroyed taking out key elements one after the other after the other Now. One of the things that you'll need to be able to do on the table to make this work is you'll have to use some units to fix the enemy assets in place, uh, either uh, physically or by, you know, by maybe you can't lock them in close combat, but uh, forcing them to stay in a particular area and avoid others. Maybe you're covering that those other areas with uh, deadly fire for the various units that the opponent has, so you kind of limiting their mobility. That gives you the maximum amount of uh, flexibility in your force <clears throat> to direct the fire you need onto those targets. So, the forces that are, or the units that are generally best suited to this Montka style uh, uh, strategy are obviously the commander in the crisis suits. That's uh, honestly, even in the fluff, part of the cornerstone of this uh, strategy. Um, obviously, the Riptide as well. Now, the Ghost Keel and Storm Surge are brand new, but they also offer overwhelming firepower out on the table, and that's not something you want to necessarily uh, discount. Hammerheads are very good, especially the Railgun when you're going against high armor targets, but do not discount that Ion Cannon. When you've got three shots that are Strength 7, AP 3, you can do a lot of damage on the table, and if you overcharge it, you get a large blast at strength 8 AP3. That can do a lot of damage to uh, Space Marines. <clears throat> Finally, the uh, to kind of round out the battle suits, your broadside is very useful. Now, the railgun one pictured here is probably not the ideal choice. The high yield missile pod one is probably better because it gives you this high strength shot, multiple shots, four set strength 7 and four strength uh, 5 shots, whereas the model in front of you has four strength five shots and one strength eight AP one shot. So depending on what you're going up against, you will probably lean toward the high yield missile pod version. 
that puts out the maximum number of shots, giving you the maximum number of potential wounds on the opponent. The more wounds you can inflict, the more chance there is for them to fail their saves, and you'll bring down units that way. Finally, a key to this is the marker lights. Now, there's two ways to bring them in. One is through drones, and one is through pathfinders. Now, pathfinders are very squishy, and the problem is they're poor armor, and the fact that they're just regular infantry. The marker light, being a heavy weapon, a heavy one, means that they can only snap shoot if they move. So you're going to have to hunker those marker lights down. They're not very flexible. But on a drone, they're relentless. So you can actually move all over the board and shoot your marker light at full ballistic skill. Granted, full ballistic skill is two, but if you attach it to a commander with a drone controller for eight points, now you're hitting on twos. If you attach it to a regular crisis suit, um, you can actually start hitting on fours, which is a little better. Now, if you do take the drones, one good way of doing that is to bring in the new uh, Montka Supplements formation of the drone network, which gives you, for the, an expensive, four units of drones, which are a minimum of four drones each, at 54 points, uh, no, 56 points each, uh, you will be able to increase the ballista skill from a 2 to a 3. You get quite a number of marker lights, and it, it makes it, the fact that there's so many of them, makes it possible for you to move them around the battlefield from many different angles, covering it better than you can with the uh, Pathfinders, who, though only cost 11 points per model, instead of the 14 for a drone, can't move more than the six inches per turn unless you run them. With the drones, you can do the assault jump as well, a jetpack move, in the assault phase for 2d6 extra. So there's a lot of redeployment. The drones are probably your best approach there. <clears throat> now you want to definitely avoid any of the ethereal units because again they're 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 squishy. They don't offer a lot. They don't buff the army enough to give you a really good chance of killing blows. The Sun Shark Bomber is probably a, a point sink you don't want to waste your time on because bombs are on strength 5, AP 5, you've got a swath of that and it's really only good against horde type armies where those blasts can really t uh, be a telling. The Sky Ray Gunship, it only has a six missiles so you're going to run out of shots pretty quick and granted it, those can do some real good damage against flyers you have other ways of taking anti-air in the list. And Skyray is, though it's cheap, probably isn't the best uh, spend for, I think it's 110 points for that. Uh, Piranhas are too fragile in general for this. Now you can use the formation again out of the Moncta that allows you to uh, essentially bring whole units back, uh, from, back from the dead almost by leaving the board going to ongoing reserve with the Piranha unit. Uh, so that could be a, a use, because they can come in, and if you arm them with the Fusion Blaster, that's a good strength 8 AP1 shot, especially if they, since they can outflank. Uh, you'll be able to come in, shoot something in a, relatively speaking, vulnerable point. You might even be able to get within the Melter range uh, and do some real damage with those. <clears throat> the fact that they bring an additional drone set of drones that you can disembark, that just adds more units, more firepower onto the field. Uh, so... The Prada does have its potential, but it has to be added as part of that uh, formation. So you've got quite a number of uh, models available, you, available to you and a way to replenish them when they get destroyed. Finally, I would also avoid the drone squadrons in general, except for that one formation, simply because they're too expensive. For the twin-link pulse carbines you get, you're spending 14 points per model, whereas a... Uh, Fire Warrior, well, just even with a Pulse Carbine, is 9 points. The Ballistic Skill is 2, so you, even though it's Twin Linked, you're only hitting half the time, which is no different than a Ballistic Skill 4, or sorry, 3 Fire Warrior. So you're really wasting your money going with that drone network uh, in general, un unless you're going with the Marker Lights. So you want to avoid the drone squadrons. Neutral units really depends on, these depend on your uh, style. The Fire Warriors themselves, uh, they're generally a good add because a full scout of 12 Warriors can take down a couple Space Marines per round of shooting, uh, especially when they're in the rapid fire range. The Cadre Fire Blade simply adds number of shots, which is key to Montka style combat. 
So you want to try to bring him if you're going with the gun line approach uh, with infantry. Stealth suits are best within a formation, but unfortunately they're, they're kind of fragile. 90 points gets you three models, and though it's cheaper than 12 Fire Warriors, um, you have the same number of shots at only 18 inch range. So you don't have the con field control you want or the flexibility with those uh, those suits. So kind of an expensive point sink, but it's it can definitely be used. The crude actually uh, could be a good add, but not all the time. There for 60 points you get 10. It's a strength four attack. That isn't all that impressive, but for additional point per, you get it access to the sniper round. So if you're going up against a monstrous creature heavy enemy, and you need to put down that hurt, a squad of 20 crew with sniper rounds is a good way to do that, and that gives you a good chance of taking down monstrous creatures uh, in the opponent. So, again, it goes to your style. It's If you like to use those types, great. If not, well, don't. Now, sniper drones are rarely seen in Tau list, but they also they provide a pretty good uh, support role, uh, striking out and taking out specific enemy units that or enemy models that might be dangerous. The fact that it's a 48 inch range rapid fire shot instead of a heavy, and the fact you're hitting on uh, two or better is pretty good. So it is expensive, but again, if your style would indicate you'd want to actually try that, uh, go for it, use it. Air support in general is another thing. That, uh, if you like to use air support, uh, the Razor Shark Strike Fighter, the Barracudas, the Heavy Remora Drones, those are all very good additions to the Tau list for a Montka style approach because they're going to bring come in and on round two at the earliest and they're going to pour firepower from different angles in a, a high volume onto their targets. Very, very useful in this particular style. So... That's how you do it, but what if you're facing it? What's your, what are some of the best ways to deal with these things? Uh, unfortunately, it's going to be hard to deal with a, a Monka style approach because there'll be so many units on the table and only key units will be in reserve. So you have a lot of targets out there and prioritization could be tough, especially when they've got multiple monstrous creatures like the Riptide, the Storm Surge, and the Ghost Keel. You're going to have to try to figure out what's going to do the most damage and how. But there are some weaknesses out there. The Ghost Keel has only got four wounds, so it's toughness five. You can pour enough fire, especially with the uh, uh, AP3 type, uh, strength eight AP3, you will start going through that those wounds pretty quickly. The Storm Surge, one of its greatest features is the fact that it can plant down itself on those uh, supporting struts and double its shots. The weakness there, though, is that you can tank shock it and destroy it. So getting any tank in your list that can move forward fast enough to get within cruising distance of the storm surge when it's in the legs down position, you can take it out without a whole lot of effort. Now, because that's a weakness of the opponent has, if the opponent knows about it, they're not going to often go into that squatting mode, if you will. And that will minimize the number of shots a storm surge can put out. So you, you still have uh, a lot of wounds to go through, and a you know decent uh, AP value or armor value, but it can't engage everything. It only it has one really solid weapon and some good backup uh, additional weapons. Those missiles, those are dangerous, and those will be uh, likely relying on the marker lights to get that D-strength shot, so you want to take the marker lights out as, as, uh, as soon as possible. Anything that can destroy, uh, take out the commander, or the uh, uh, marker lights is going to be important. Trying to actually take the this entire Monka force out is, is not something you should try to do. You need to weaken it by minimizing the number of shots it can land. So, overwhelming firepower, uh, not necessarily in strength, but in number of shots, if you can. Obviously, this is Tau, so getting into close combat, so bikes, jet bikes, Thunderwolf, cavalry, cavalry in general, anything that can charge across the board, a monstrous creature is going to fall to sniper shots, and it's going to fall to close combat, uh, as long as there's some good, sh uh, strong weapons in there. Uh, your Fire Warriors are going to wound on sixes, 
uh, either the Riptide or the Storm, uh, sorry, the Ghost Keel. The drones will actually wound on uh, six, yeah, six uh, actually fives, and the commanders will wound on five, and the crisis suits on five. So you've got some capability of delivering some close assault, close combat um, hurt on those monstrous creatures, but it will be very difficult. A uh, um, um, good way to approach it, though, is an MSU, a multiple small unit list, because with the number of units he's going to have, <clears throat> you're, you're forcing him to go after one unit at a time with his units. He can't split up his force. In order to get some of the benefits from this, uh, some of these formations, three units have to fire at the same target to gain a ballistic skill benefit, for example. Well, if you have multiple small units, he's going to be wasting shots, potentially, to try to get that additional ballistic skill. So that's a way to minimize yeah, the threat from this uh, Montka style tactic. So there's some insight into kind of a Tau strategy. And I hope you benefited from this. hope you learned a little bit, either as a Tau player, how to you know craft around it, if it does mesh with your style, or if you're facing it, some ideas on how to actually counter uh, some of the strengths of this particular uh, strategy. With that, please share, like, subscribe, and I will catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.